on. Oh man, really making some strides in this tournament. Yeah, I think this is his first tournament out ever, actually. Yeah, and uh, I mean, clearly Team Liquid saw the potential because he's already sponsored by Team Liquid. That's kind of crazy. They only pick up the best of the best. <laughs> 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 as as you know. So that's very impressive that he's been able to get on the squad and make top eight at his very first sponsored event. Genghis that's not Juan. easy. And he's been kind of switching between some of his Right, characters. he's got a couple characters. Went the Fox. Sheik, went the Fox. Sheik. I think he tried Falco maybe just a, once. Just a couple games of Falco. A couple. They put that away real quick. The yeah. Sheik especially was quite impressive versus the yeah. versus Lucky. Yeah, and Took then the Fox game versus five. Eddie Mexico. I mean, they were both yeah. just... You know, a lot of people don't give credit where credit is due to HBox's secondaries. They're weird, but they're good. No, it's they're very good. He still has, like, really solid reads on what his opponent is going to do, especially with the edge guarding versus Lucky. It felt like he was puffing a couple of those situations where you just, like, go out there yeah. and follow uh, follow him with, like, neutral air and then just run off with forward air. Right. Just yeah, no, the edge guarding was on point. The neutral, uh, weird nu neutral interactions with HBox's secondaries, but but it works. They're good. They're, it's it's so strange. He spends a lot of time just kind of waiting for the opponent, standing his ground. Right. But we'll see what he can do against the, the likes of Coderin, top SoCal Marth. Yeah. <laughs> this is a a tough matchup. If you don't play it too often. Right? right, yeah. It's definitely one of those matchups that you want to be familiar with and comfortable with. Yeah. And there's, as I mentioned, the kind of slow, calculated neutral from Genghis Wan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Taking his time. Finding kind of these these simple openings that a lot of, you know, top boxes would kind of try to overcomplicate and drop the punish sometimes. Yeah. He just keeps it simple and gets the guaranteed damage a lot. Same, same yeah, for, for sure, even on the, the, the punish game and even aside from the neutral. Mm -hmm. Just really solid. And going for up smash there because he understands that he is at good kill percent. The right. side B actually looking up here. Yeah. Very good. Nicely done. Oh. Ooh. Caught him slipping a little. Yeah. With the with the invincibility, and that'll be a stock. Yeah, the uh, the recovery from Genghis Wan will be really interesting to look at here because that's kind of the the crux of the matchup for Fox versus Marth is can you avoid dying immediately when yeah. you're off stage? And, and Fox's recovery is particular uh, is tricky in particular because of all the different like side Bs you can do, all the different angles you can do with up B. Right. So I wonder if Genghis Wan is well versed in that kind of style. Yeah, we'll see. Potential edge guard situation coming Ooh. up here. Let's see what he's got. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, good upbeat down to the ledge. Got an angle there. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. That is really difficult to do where you run off and try to aerial back. Mm -hmm. um, especially against a Marth. He's yeah, got that big disjoint. Mm -hmm. Oh. He's definitely got edge cancel with all oh, his yeah, characters. That's something I've definitely seen yeah, quite a bit. Yeah, it's just uh, something that comes naturally to him. It looks like. Not going to get the up throw up air, but keeping Ooh. the pressure on. Okay, tries to get that get up attack, but good sweet spot for Kodarin. But the jab is going to shield poke into the up smash confirm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Again, keeping it simple, getting that kill. Not quite getting the tipper there on that forward smash. Ooh. Oh man, Kodarin is actually doing a really good job playing against uh, HBox in the corner. Just the way that yeah. he's like kind of spacing these forwarders and then waiting for a, an option and then forward smashing it. Mm -hmm. But Juan might be catching on a little yeah, bit. Yeah, getting some good damage here. Nice. Okay. Side B, not quite high enough. Yeah. Slight lead now for Koderin. Mm -hmm. Okay, good tech there on the dash attack. That, that could have been big damage. Ooh. Weird angle on the up smash, not quite gonna kill, and smartly gets off the edge there. Not yeah. trying to continue the edge guard when he, he knew it was lost. Yeah, because a lot of times you might get clipped with a forward air, right. you don't have the invincibility or you mistime yeah. it. Or they grab the edge before you do right. some options. Ooh, the huge Ken combo from Coda Rin. Yeah, got sliced up a bit there. Actually did. At the end of game one, Coda Rin taking a solid two stock over Genghis Wan. And he's looking like he's going to stay Fox here, or at least thinking about the stages. Again, he's been going mostly Fox and Sheik today. So if there's a switch, would it's have to anticipate Sheik. the Sheik. Probably Sheik, right? Um, but again, I think 
for either of these secondaries, it's kind of a weird one where he's playing against a really solid Marth. So the options are kind of different. Oh, okay. Ganondorf. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> where did this come from? Oh. The Wanendorf. Oh. Coming oh. out, okay. Well, so far, already putting it on 38% yep. somehow. Yeah, I started off with that big down air. I mean, HBox as a player is very read heavy, and I think Ganon in this matchup, and Ganon in, in general, a lot of his openings are um, off of huge reads with down airs or, or side Bs right. or what have you. So maybe this will work out. And against Marth, this is not a bad matchup. It's definitely not, especially on Yoshi's. Super reverse. doable. He if he hits him with a, a strong attack right now, he's dead. So. Yeah. <laughs> but the the reverse back air. Yeah. Nice little combo okay, I like there. the uh, jump away down B. Try to make the edge guard a little bit more difficult, but it's still Ganondorf recovery. Yeah. But yeah, uh, H box honestly looks like he's having like a lot of fun today, just going with the secondaries and trying them out. Ooh. Ooh. Maybe what? not there. Yeah, not. Not what you want as, as a Ganondorf. But yeah, I mean, this this whole tournament just seems like a, a leisurely tournament for right. each box. Yeah, just see what he can do with his secondaries. And obviously, it's not bad. I mean, top eight yeah. at an event of this caliber is no joke. Again, there's a lot Ooh. of decent players here, like really, really good players. Yeah. <laughs> like, Arizona's out here, Mexico's out here, Chile is out here. Yeah. Florida. Ooh. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of killers, but... Uh, Genghis Khan finally taking a stock in his taunt for good measure. <laughs> Kodorin is not down with the taunt. He immediately <laughs> down airs it. Both, both players kind of having a laugh like, okay, this is, we, we figured the outcome yeah. already. Let's, uh, let's go on to game three. Yeah. Let's see what we'll happens see what, here. We'll see what, uh, you know, Genghis Khan has up his sleeve. I'm imagining either back to Fox or Sheik. Oh, what, wait, wait, whoa, 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 wait oh, a minute. Wait a second. Oh! Okay. okay. Genghis Khan. Onto the cloud for good measure. Oh, rolling in. Oh, so many rolls. <laughs> that's that's some puff out of shield play right yes. there. The double roll. <laughs> okay, edge guard. Oh, tries to go for the edge cancel there off the up B, but Coderin is ready for it. Yeah, he's just not letting up on these edge guards whatsoever. Dunking him he's just like, for good measure. You know what? I know you're playing Ganon, but that was your pick. Yeah. That was your decision. That's not my fault. It really was. It looked okay at first, but... It started off with a quick downer and then kind of went downhill from there. Yeah. Oh, going Falco. Oh, I'm surprised he's not about opting the to bird. go Sheik. Yeah, but uh, again, like I said, I think it's just this day and age, it's so hard to contend with a Marth when you don't know the matchup. And he's probably more familiar with playing Marth as Falco than he has as Sheik. Right. Even though, you know, theoretically, Sheik has a better matchup there. Right. But it's a tough one either way. It looks like he is going to go with the Falco, or he's still thinking about it. He's Falco. down 2-0 right now, so this could be his tournament life on the line based on this character pick. Falco is scary, man. Falco is a scary character to do against Marth unless you have a lot of matchup experience. Because the combo game that you do have with Falco versus Marth is a little bit tricky. It's a lot of timing-based yeah. combos. No, it's definitely harder to do. But again, I feel like... HBox probably has the most experience with this Falco as far as his secondaries go. Right. And therefore, maybe he's more well equipped to deal with a Marth as Falco than Sheik. Because, again, these days, it's theoretically a Sheik advantage matchup slightly at this point. Right. But the Marths know exactly what to do against he's, the Sheik. He's having a ball trying to figure out what character he wants to play. Yeah. I saw him hover over Ness for a little bit. Yeah. What if he just went puff? <laughs> <laughs> That's the go, huge mix up right now. Just go puff, end. dude. <laughs> we won't say anything. We'll, we'll keep it on the low. He just decides he wants to win. <laughs> he changes his tag from Genghis Wan just back to H. <laughs> back to H. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right, off stage. Okay, high recovery. Also interesting that he uh, opts to go Yoshi's. Yeah, uh, it's not the worst it's, counterfeit, it's, but you would think probably Stadium. Usually. Yeah, it's definitely not a bad pick for Fox, especially in the current uh, era of versus Marth. Yeah. But that speaks to me about uh, HBox and how he wants to play the matchup. Right. right? He wants to be kind of close quarters. He wants to be in his face. He wants yeah. to like flex his tech skill a little bit. Yeah, I mean, you you would think a Puff might consider the Dreamland too. That's what I mean. Yeah. It, so yeah, I think he's uh he's trying to keep him nearby. 
Okay. Up throw up air. HBox, no stranger to that on the receiving end. So, yeah, it's good that he can dish it out, too. For sure. Ooh, look at the spacing he's keeping outside those neutral airs in the dash dance. Yeah, really good crouch cancel grab from Koderin, though. Mm -hmm. Misses his chain grab. A little bit unfortunate. Ooh. Oh, just goes right in there with the down tilt. But it feels like HBox was kind of priming him for that kind of approach, right? Yeah. Oh, Ooh. no. Yeah, bad DI there. Not expecting that forward smash at all. But yeah, that's that's what, as I mentioned before, this kind of interesting neutral from HBox's secondaries where he doesn't have the aerial drift that he has with Puff, right? So right. he almost kind of just plays that on the ground where he tries to bait you in on the ground, even if it's just standing there. And then as soon as you come in with something, either shields or he dashes out and kind of tries to counter it. Yeah, he waits so. right outside the range of anything you can throw out. Right. And then hopes that you get in there. But in a matchup like this, man, the punish game is so heavy from the Martin. Tries to go for the up smash, too. Yeah. Yeah, Koderin may be feeling himself a little bit here. Up 2-0 against the best player in the world. <laughs> yeah. I mean. Yeah. yeah, not wrong. Taken out of context, he's looking like looking like number one. That's true. Ooh. Ooh. And that'll be it, yeah. yeah. Too far away to get. So Back the Genghis Juan might be on his last tournament stock. Let's see if he can pull any kind of clutch box with the secondaries. Ooh, tried to go for a shine in between the hits of the neutral air mm -hmm. off a of crouch cancel, but just mistimed it a little bit. Okay, staying outside the range of the ledge dash up tilt. Oh, gets hit with the... Okay, <laughs> dash attack gonna get punished. Oh, he's on the platform now. That's the scary part of the stage. The yeah. Oh, but grab. gets a grab he out of just nowhere. Yoinked him. How did he <laughs> yoink him from up there? That was definitely a yoink. <laughs> Jeez. Hey, uh oh. Yeah. And the little charge, the baby charge. Yeah. That's Ward's nice. Yeah, a lot of Marcy would see go for the pivot, but the charge actually makes more sense. A little more damage, and you're still ending up with the same situation. Yeah. Especially on a top platform like that. Yep. He was done, but still a, a pretty impressive showing for. For HBox here yeah. with his secondaries, man. You got to give him props. I think we got to give it up. I mean, based on, you know, what people expected, based on what the TOs expected at least, his seed was like low teens, high 20s. Right. It was it was not a great seed, but he made it to top eight mm -hmm. with the secondaries, took Lucky to game five, the lucky, beat lucky so Bimbo good. Mexico, beat Eddie Mexico with his secondaries. Yeah. You got to give some props there. That's definitely... Those are, you know, top 100 level players. Definitely. And, and especially Eddie Mexico. He beat him with Fox, right? Yeah. How many Foxes has Eddie Mexico yes. beaten? Many, many Foxes. It's, I mean, everyone in this day and age, your best matchup is probably going to be Fox. So for HBox to go Fox, who not a lot of people know that he even has a Fox, for him to bust it out and make top eight, mostly with the Fox, a little bit of Sheik as well. But either way, I think uh, deserves some props for sure. I think his secondaries get very slept on, so. But we also got to give props to Koderin for beating the number one player That's in the true. world. Taking out Genghis Wan. Yeah. You can put that in your Twitter bio. You can. I beat the number one player in the world. 3-0. He 3-0'd the best player in the world. Yeah. That's not easy to do. No, not the man.